Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. This is Logic 301, month number three on Piano Arithmetic. Today we're going to be looking at what is A7, the axiom of infinity. Now, so far, in order to build out our basic universe, we needed to accept six underlying axioms. A basic universe is one where these first six axioms hold. Our next step is to build up to a universe where we can do some basic mathematics. To do this, we need to add one more axiom, often called the axiom of infinity. This axiom upgrades our universe from a basic universe to a Zermelo universe. Once we have a Zermelo universe, we can progress further by adding the axiom of substitution, also called the axiom schema of replacement, to get a zermelo frankel universe, and eventually we will add the controversial axiom of choice to get a ZFC universe. For now, we're going to stick with a zermelo universe that allows us to do a lot of basic mathematics. So, the axiom itself is actually quite simple. It just states that the class of all natural numbers is a set. This is interesting because it might seem like at this point we could prove that the class of all natural numbers is a set. We've already proven informally that the class of all natural numbers is a class, given that the universal class is inductive and all natural numbers are members of inductive classes. This means that the natural numbers are a subclass of the universe and therefore a class. However, they're not necessarily a member of the universe and therefore not necessarily a set. And we couldn't really formally prove that statement because we didn't really have the principle of mathematical induction yet. And because we cannot prove this one way or another, we need to assume it in the form of an axiom. But it's a pretty simple axiom. Here's the formal axiom. There are several different ways you might see this stated, depending on how many definitions of the underlying terms are offered. Basically, this is just saying that the class of all natural numbers is a set. In other words, a member of the universal class. Similar to axiom 3, the axiom of the null set, it can be stated quite simply. We're going to call this axiom 7 or A7 in proofs. Now, if you don't have the definitions for natural numbers, we might state this axiom as follows. If we spell out the definition of a natural number, it might look something like this. There exists some class A such that that class A is a member of the universal class, and for all B, B is a member of A is materially equivalent to for all C. If C is an inductive class, then B is a member of C. Or we might further spell out the definition of an inductive set, it might look like this. There exists some A such that A is a member of V, and for all B, B is a member of A is materially equivalent to for all C, the null set is a member of C, and for all D, D is a member of C implies that the successor of D is a member of C implies that B is a member of C. That said, for simplicity's sake, we're going to stick with the basic definition for proofs, though you may see definitions that look like this elsewhere. Up next, what is a Zermelo universe? We're going to do a quick review of all of the axioms we have so far to understand what our Zermelo universe is. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.